Many students ask what work they should turn in when they're asked to look at things on their screen or perhaps do something within a program and then there is no document or file that's created that allows them to turn in their homework. Well, one thing that you can do is take screenshots and many instructors, myself included, prefer this when you do work of that sort. And so if you were working in Microsoft Outlook and you were asked to take a look at an email that was saved in the drafts folder as you see here on the screen I'm going to double click it to open the email you could prove by taking a screenshot that um, that you actually perform these steps and you do this by clicking and by pressing the print screen key on your keyboard and typically this is near your numbers pad and it might have uh, an abbreviation like PRT SCR on a typical keyboard all you have to do is press the alt key and hold it and then press print screen to take a picture of the active window in other words the window that you have last clicked on if you want to take a picture of or a screenshot of your entire screen then just press print screen without first holding down the alt key and so I'm gonna click in my test email press alt print screen to take the picture and then I'm going to open Microsoft Paint by clicking the Windows button and typing in Paint. And this works in Windows 7. If you're running an older version of Windows, you may have to type in MS Paint, all one word, for Microsoft Paint. Next, I'm going to paste my image into uh, Microsoft Paint. And so notice that I have that email all copied here as an image. The next thing that I would do is save this. I click to save. I'll save this on my desktop and I'll name it whatever uh, exercise I'm working on. So we could say something like lesson and then put my name on it and I'll save this. And probably the first thing that I should do is save this as a JPEG instead of a PNG and now I have that saved and notice how the image now shows on my uh, on my desktop the next thing I can do is launch Microsoft Word and here's Word and then I could enter my information and I'm just going to click the image and drag it onto my Word document and now I can save the Word document to wherever location, uh, whichever location I'd like to save it to, and then send this file to my instructor. Let's add an image to our web page. And I'm going to do this by clicking at the end of the unordered list and ins inserting two blank lines. And I'm going to insert an image by using the image source element. And I do this by, and I'm just going to paste it in there by using image source or SRC equals and then notice how I have my open quotation marks and so the actual path to my image has to be enclosed within the quotation marks then I have a space and then a forward slash and then I have my tag the greater than sign that closes the image source uh, element now notice that I use C colon backslash and then the name of the image is John underscore small jpg and so I'm going to save this just so you can see that it is there so I'm gonna save control s and then I'm going to click on my web page and press F5 to refresh now I notice that the image and this is me in front of one of Microsoft's uh, buildings in Issaquah is shown here on the page now let's say that I make a mistake so I erase you know, part of the file's name, the double L's. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to click on my web page and press F5 to refresh. And now I get, I have a placeholder for the image, but there's no image to display. In other words, the browser can't locate it. And so I'm going to fix my typing mistake. Save it. Control S. Click on my web page. And I could just Alt Tab. So if I'm here and my note pad plus plus document I could alt tab over I'm gonna press F5 to refresh now 
if I use this type of a path, which is C colon backslash, and then the name of this file, what happens if I'm developing this web page for a customer, and then I take this completed web page and the image, and I move it to their server? That means that I'm going to have to put the image on the C drive of the server and make sure that it has the same name. And so what you're going to want to do is use relative references. And so you'll create a folder in which you would put your web pages. And then you'd create another folder within that folder and name it Images. All of your images will be put in the Images folder. In that case, all I would have to do is refer to the Images folder, and it would be relative to this web page. Its location would be relative to this web page, and it wouldn't have to find the C drive. We'll discuss that in a later chapter where we talk about how to place our files and folders within a website.